Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here, and today we're going to be doing a wrap up of the patch, talking about the champions that were added into the game, as well as going over the event and talking about some of the issues that Riot has and has not addressed. If you enjoy all this Path of Champions content, definitely like and subscribe, and let's get into it. So, starting off with the event, this event was very average. It was fine, not really great. We had pretty much the same amount of champion shards or champion fragments, mostly being for the three main ones. There were some wild fragments in there as well as one gold vault near the end, but nothing too incredible in my opinion. Really sad we didn't see any guaranteed relic drops. In the last event I believe we had three, and then most other events we had at least one. So the fact we have no guaranteed relics is quite disappointing. There are a decent amount of silver reliquaries, but often those are just converted into a couple champion fragments, so reliquaries are not nearly as exciting. So overall, this event was pretty much just fine. Nothing great. Sadly, we have not gotten any guardians in a very long time. So the guardians, all of these guardians, except for Bailey right here, this is the only one I think I've actually bought individually. All of the rest of these are from different events that they've done over the years and as you see there are quite a good amount of them i think some of the events especially the earlier ones had like two or more and yes some of them are just reskinned copies of other ones but it was still different guardians you could get which are normally quite fun to have on your board and we've not gotten any of these in two to three events which is quite disappointing we have gotten some card backs and some skins which are fine but hopefully they add some guardians back into the events but overall this event just fine definitely not bad Bad, but also not amazing. Also, let's touch on some of the issues that Riot has fixed and some that they have not. So the double Chemtech duplicator issue, a lot of people had their Chemtech duplicator deleted when they claimed it from the event pass. So for all the people that that happened, they sent everyone five wild fragments. So not really great. I was really hoping we were going to be able to equip two Chemtech duplicators. That would have been a lot of fun, but they did finally address it and send those out to people. Sadly, they didn't say anything in the last patch, which is a little annoying, but they did actually address that issue and did compensate those who were affected. So that was quite nice. They still have not addressed Gale Force not being in the available loot pool, and they have not added rewards to the monthly challenges. Both of those are very disappointing. I will keep trying to remind Riot of that, and hopefully they will address those before too long. Was really hoping they were going to do it this patch, since this is the big patch that happens every three months with the event when they're changing most things. Maybe they'll address it in one of the next couple patches, but it probably won't be till three months from now when it's the next big event pass where they're releasing a new expansion. So a bit disappointing there, but at least they finally addressed one of the major issues. Taking a look at champions now, as you can see, I have my account fully maxed out again. So we have all the champions, all the stars, and all of them fully leveled up. Let's start with Nico. So she is actually quite a well-designed champion, has some very interesting star powers, and feels quite unique to play. Now, she is a bit of a pain to level early. Her deck seems to have a lot of shortcomings, but a lot of those are fixed and addressed with her champion level ups. Like some of the issues is having two dogs, which are the two of the same subtype, but one of those gets fury, so it counts as a dragon as well as a dog, which both helps you level up and then helps fix the issue of having two with the same subtype in your deck. The Lionhawk being too expensive, they're able to give us the double time watch so this can count down and end up actually being playable instead of just needing to be cut right away. And then one of the other issues you feel early is the draw, but the Grave Companion helps with that as well as the Frostcoat Cub getting the Philosopher's Stone, great addition right there. Since I got this upgrade, I never really struggled with running out of cards on Nico. And while she is a pain to level up early, once I was getting around level 20 and then 20 to 30, I actually had a very fun time playing her, was quite enjoyable. I understand there's a lot of people upset with her early that they feel like she's too weak. Been there, I agree, she doesn't feel the best at early levels, but she's definitely worth, worth the payoff. I think Riot did a great job bringing a unique champion to the game, especially a two cost, which feels strong when she's leveled up, but does not feel broken like Diana, Jax, or even max level Elise. So I think overall, this is one of the better designed decks. I love the fact that it's all new cards. I don't think we've seen any of these cards in any of the other decks. And the star powers, while not overly imaginative, still reinforce a very unique playstyle, and I think she's quite well put together overall. 
and a great addition to the game. Next up, we have Nidalee. Nidalee is incredibly strong. I love her star powers. Both of them are very strong. The clever camouflage, constantly being able to recycle your units into ones that are more powerful was a lot of fun. That fitting into your transform playstyle was great. Being able to summon those ephemeral copies and scale up your units with those transforms is a lot of fun. I love her playstyle. Nidalee as a champion as well, incredibly strong. She's right up there with the strongest champions in the game. Now there are some issues with her deck. I hate that there are these random cards that don't really fit. Desert Duel, Merciless Hunter, and a Bruiser. Now I think Desert Duel and Merciless Hunter could be fine. I think the Bruiser really should go, but I think that they were potentially trying to make her not too overpowered which is why they added in some of these random cards that don't really make sense. I think it's probably why they're in there, because they realized that she was just completely ridiculous. So while some of these cards are annoying, I wish they would change them. I understand if that's why they did them, because yes, she is incredibly broken, and if she had an entire deck that was actually well-crafted, she would be by far the best champion of the game. So they had to handicap her a little bit, bit disappointing but still overall she's a very fun champion again brings a very unique play style which i really like and i think again she's a very solid addition to the roster also shout out to riot for finally fixing the starting deck issue before it could only show one upgrade on each item so they finally made it so it can show multiple items which is great that they finally fixed that it was quite annoying to have to deal with so last up we have the poro king and while he was a lot of fun initially, I feel like he might be the worst out of the three new champions. His deck is okay, but it feels like they should have put more Poros in here, especially with how you're getting a support champion that's adding more cards, and then normally every upgrade is giving you more cards that are potentially not Poros. Quite often I end up having games where I just get a bunch of like the Catamobile and Professor Von Yip, but I'm not drawing any of my Poros. So the Poro King to me is the most inconsistent. Um, also, he feels a lot like several other scaling decks where you're just trying to get keywords and stack everyone up. So while it is a Poro deck and that is a lot of fun, it sometimes feels less like a Poro deck and more just like a scaling deck. He's one that I'd really like you to comment down below your experience with him. He can be a lot of fun and it's great when you get a full board of massive Poros, but he definitely feels very inconsistent to me and there's just been a lot of games where it seems like I don't have any Poros to draw, which can be quite frustrating when you're trying to play a Poro deck. His star powers are quite simple. It's nice how well they play into each other, but again, it just focuses on having a scaling deck and doesn't really have anything to do with Poros at all, which is, again, a bit disappointing. I think he was the one that many people were the most excited about just because he was a Poro deck, but the more I play him, the less it feels necessarily like a Poro deck, which is a bit disappointing. Still though, it is great that we have a deck that is trying to focus more on Poros. It can still be a lot of fun, but I do think a lot of us were a little bit too excited with him initially, just because we loved Poros, but quite often his deck does feel a little bit more inconsistent than the other champions. Overall though, I'm happy with the new additions to the game. I feel like each one of them is a solid addition and gives you a unique play style. Now, quite often in these patch roundup videos, I try to rank the champions, and while I have hit level 30 on all of them, I haven't played them very long at level 30, and so I don't want to give them a max level ranking as of yet. I'll be playing them more in the coming days, and I'll probably be updating the max level tier list, so keep an eye out for that for their rankings. I just want to test each one of them out with multiple different builds to get the best grasp of them before I give them a definitive ranking. Overall, I think this was a good patch. There was some things that kind of brought it down. The event was really just average, and the three champions, while they were a solid addition, in the last patch a month ago, we got no champions, so I know a lot of people were hoping that this patch would be kind of bigger than normal to somewhat compensate. That really didn't happen. The patch itself is fine, but definitely not blowing anyone away. We still have a region that we haven't gotten yet, and there hasn't been any real meaningful changes to the monthly adventures. Hopefully we see that soon, but to be honest, this patch was just okay, which for many of us is a bit disappointing 
Champions since I think we were really hoping Riot was going to knock it out of the park. If you enjoy Path of Champions content, I normally release about six videos a week. So definitely like and subscribe and I hope you have a great day.